the Battle of Kaiserslautern saw a coalition army under Charles William Ferdinand, Duke of Brunswick Wolfenbüttel oppose a Republican French army led by Lazare Hoche. Three days of conflict resulted in a victory by the Prussians and their electoral Saxon allies as they turned back repeated French attacks. The War of the First Coalition Combat was fought near the city of Kaiserslautern in the modern-day state of Rhineland-Palatinate, Germany which is located about 60 kilometers west of Mannheim. In the First Battle of Wissenberg, the coalition army of Dagobert Sigmund von Worms broke through the frontier defenses and drove the French army of the Rhine south to Strasbourg. In response to this crisis, the French government appointed Hoche to command the army of the Moselle and Jean-Charles Picagru to lead the army of the Rhine, while urging then to relieve the siege of Landau. In November, Hoche launched an offensive which pressed back the Duke of Brunswick's army to Kaiserslautern. On 28 November, French troops moved on Brunswick's defences from the north, northwest and west. But for two days the coalition army fended off the piecemeal attacks of their adversaries. Hoche finally got his entire army into action on the 30th, but the professional Prussian soldiers proved more than a match for the enthusiastic but indifferently trained French. After the setback, Hoche changed his strategy and turned a large part of his army against Worms's exposed western flank in Alsace. The next engagement was the Battle of Froschwiller in December. Prologue The 36,850-man coalition army of Charles William Ferdinand, Duke of Brunswick successfully concluded the siege of Mainz on 23 July 1793. The French garrison of 18,675 men surrendered and was released on the promise of not fighting the coalition for one year. The French government immediately sent the released troops to fight in the internal war in the Vendée. During the siege, the French suffered approximately 4,000 casualties while the coalition lost about 3,000. The 60,000-strong army of the Rhine under Alexandre de Buhamis and the 40,000-strong army of the Moselle under Jean-Nicolas Huchard were poised to march to the relief of Mainz. However, Buhamis had not informed the Mainz garrison that help was on the way and then took too long to start his movement. After the fall of Mainz, both French armies retreated, the army of the Rhine to Wissenberg and the army of the Moselle to the Saar River. Blamed for the loss of Mainz, Buhamis fell into a funk, begged to be relieved of command and on 23 August 1793 he was replaced by Charles Hyacinth Leclerc de Landremont. Meanwhile, Bouchard had been replaced by Balthazar Alexis Henry Schauenberg on 5 August. Buhamis was executed by guillotine on 23 July 1794. His widow Josephine de Buhamis later married Napoleon Bonaparte. Landremont was soon ordered to send 12,000 soldiers to the Army of the North. This reduced the strength of his field force to 45,000 with an additional 39,000 in garrisons or in the Upper Rhine Division under John Charles. Picagru, Brunswick pressed forward toward the fortress of Bitcher, driving back the core of the Vosges and the army of the Moselle. At this moment, the French government dismissed Schauenberg for the crime of being an aristocrat. During his short tenure he had drilled the troops into better shape. The late commander of the corps of the Vosges Jean René Moreau was named to succeed him, but declined because an old wound had reopened. A division commander, Jacques-Charles René de Lorny reluctantly took over the army on 30 September. Landremont was also dismissed and arrested but his intended replacement, Antoine Guillaume Delmas was trapped in the siege of Landau. Picagru was offered command of the Army of the Rhine but he refused. Since the generals saw that leading the army led to arrest or execution, none wanted to accept the command. Finally on 2 October, Jean-Pascal Carlens took command of the Army of the Rhine. He would quickly prove to be completely unfitted for the job. On 13 October 1793, 
A 43,185-man coalition army led by Dagobert Sigmund von Worms defeated Karlenk's 34,400-strong army in the First Battle of Wissenberg. The government ordered Karlenk's arrest on the 23rd. The Army of the Rhine withdrew to the Zorn River near Strasbourg while Worms's army occupied northern Alsace. On the 22nd of October, Delaunay sent six battalions to Savern where they helped repel an attack by one of Worms's divisions. Picagru took command of the Army of the Rhine on 29 October. That same day Delaunay was dismissed from command of the Army of the Moselle. His rank was general of division rather than army commander because he was supposed to act under the orders of Picagru. On 18 November, Picagru began a series of attacks on Worms's defensive lines in the Battle of Hagnor. Both Hoche and Picagru were well aware that the main objective was the relief of Landau. In mid-November 1793, Hoche advanced from the Saar with 36,000 troops while the rest of the army guarded the passes through the Vosges. Hoche used rough language with his subordinates. At this time he wrote one of his division commanders Jean-Jacques Ambert, listen, burger of a sans culotte. On 17 November, a Prussian raid on the fort at Bitcher failed. Leopold Alexander von Wartens Leben's column of 1,200 picked soldiers overran the outer defences with the help of a French traitor. However, they were soon discovered and repulsed with casualties of 120 killed and 251 captured. The French lost 63 men captured and few other losses. The same day, the French divisions of Alexandre Camille Tarponia and Louis Pierre Rouet bumped into 13,000 Prussians under Friedrich Adolf, Count von Kalkreut at Biesingen, north of Mandelbachtel. The 20,000 French troops were drubbed, losing 760 men killed or wounded and 42 captured against a Prussian loss of only 16 killed and 92 wounded. Despite the setback at Biesingen, Brunswick's troops were pulling back into winter quarters and Hoche entered Blaskastel on 18 November. The Prussians abandoned the camp of Hornbach and the French occupied it on 19. Believing that he had his enemies on the run, Hoche became very optimistic. Alarmed at the French offensive and anxious that they intended to relieve Landau by moving by a Pearmsons. Brunswick made up his mind to offer battle at Kaiserslautern. In fact, Hoche hoped to raise the siege of Landau by striking east from Zweibrücken and then down the Queek River. Meanwhile, Hoche completely lost track of his enemies. From Zweibrücken he launched his army toward Pirmasens on the 24th only to have to march back to his starting point the next day when he did not find Brunswick. Finally, the French started northeast for Kaiserslautern in three columns. On the left, Ambert moved through Neunkirchen and Potsberg and Reich and back Stegen toward Otterberg, north of Kaiserslautern. On the right, Tarponia marched directly on Kaiserslautern via Landstuhl, with instructions to seize the Hoheneck Heights. Hoche with the main body advanced through Skonenberg Kubelberg toward Rodenbach. Our acute M.Y. Vincent was posted in Pirmasens to watch the Prussians and to shield the army's movement. Battle Forces The Duke of Brunswick's army consisted of 35 and 3 quarters battalions, 54 squadrons and 10 artillery batteries, a total of 26,000 Prussians, Saxons and allies. There were three Prussian divisions led by General Lieutenants Ludwig Karl von Kalkstein, Nikolaus Heinrich von Schoenfeld and Friedrich Adolf, Count von Kalkreut, one Saxon division, an advance guard led by Colonel Schickley and a guards brigade under General Major Friedrich Adrian von Rode. All units are Prussian unless otherwise noted. The advance guard included five squadrons of the Combined Cavalry Regiment, two squadrons of the Saxon Hussar Regiment, the 2nd Battalion of the Wittinghof Infantry Regiment near, 38 and two field pieces. 
Roder's Guards Brigade consisted of two battalions of the Guard Infantry Regiment near 15 and the 1st Battalion of the Grenadier Guard near 6. The Saxon Division comprised one battalion each of the infantry regiments Kerfist, Prinz Anton, Clemens and Gotha and five squadrons each of the Carabinier, Lieb Corassia and Kurland Chevalier regiments. Kalkstein's division consisted of three battalions each of the infantry regiments Brunswick Wolfenbüttel near 19 and Prince Heinrich near 35. Schoenfeld's division included three battalions of infantry regiment Cruces near 39, Fusilier Battalion Legat near 20, one company of Jaegers, one company of Imperial Trier Jaegers, five squadrons each of the Borstel Cuirassiers near 7 and Lottem Dragoons near 1, two squadrons of the Eben Hussars near 2, and one foot and one horse artillery batteries of eight guns each. Kalkruth's division counted three battalions each of infantry regiments Kalkstein near 5, Duke of Brunswick near 21 and Nobelsdorf near 27, two battalions of Ittinghoff near 38, the second battalions of the Guard near 15 and Grenadier Guard near 6, and five squadrons of the Vos Dragoons near 11. The army artillery train was made up of 26 six-pound cannons in four-foot batteries, eight twelve-pound cannons in one-foot battery and one battery of eight mortars. Lazara Hosh's army of the Moselle numbered 29,115 infantry, 5,046 cavalry and 52 field guns. These were organized into an advance guard under General of Brigade Paul Alexis Dubois and divisions under Generals of Division Ambert, Uwe, Thaponia and Vincent. In the list that follows, the numbered units are regulars while the italicized units are National Guard volunteer battalions and free companies. The advance guard included one company of the 89th Line Infantry, the Gerard, Guillaume, Louvre and Metz free companies. Four squadrons each of the 1st Carabinier and 1st Dragoon regiments, three squadrons of the 3rd Hussars, one squadron of the 7th Hussars, a half squadron each of the Jamaps Hussars and the 6th and 16th Chasseurs a Cheval and 12 guns in two horse artillery batteries. Ambert's division was organized into brigades under John Baptiste Olivier, Henry Simon and Joinville. Olivier led one battalion of the 13th Line Infantry, one battalion and four squadrons of the Moselle Legion, four squadrons of the 2nd Carabinier Regiment and six guns in one horse artillery battery. Simon commanded the 1st Battalion of the 30th Line, the 2nd Battalion of the 55th Line, the 3rd Battalion of the République, the 4th Battalions of the Haute Saône and Mother and the 5th Battalion of the Orne. The Joinville Brigade comprised the 2nd Battalion of the 99th Line and 1 Battalion of the Joinville. Huey's division was divided into brigades led by Antoine Morlot and Nicolas Augustin Paillard. Morlot directed the 1st Battalions of the 44th and 81st Line, the 2nd Battalion of the 71st Line, the 1st Battalion of the Ardennes, the 2nd Battalion of the Haute-Marne, the 6th Battalion of the Mother and 16 guns in two-foot artillery batteries. Paillard commanded the 1st Battalions of the 103rd Line and Rhône-et-Loire, 2nd Battalions of the 58th Line and Seine-et-Marne the 6th Battalion of the Vosges, the 7th Battalion of the Mother and a half company of sappers. Huey's advance guard consisted of one company of the 96th Line, the Ballard, Morris and Observatory Free Companies and four squadrons each of the 4th Cavalry and 9th Chasseurs a Cheval Regiments. Tarponia's division had a brigade under Antoine de Sagne Lombard and an advance guard. Lombard directed the 1st Battalion of the 1st Line, the 2nd Battalions of the 8th and 54th Line, the 3rd Battalion of the Mancha, 7th Battalion of the Rhone Loire, a half company of sappers and eight guns in one foot artillery battery. Tarponia's advance guard was made up of the 3rd Louvre, 4th Louvre, Bonds, Tires and Jamaps Free Companies. 
four squadrons each of the 10th Cavalry and 14th Dragoon Regiments and eight guns in one foot artillery battery. Vincent's division had the 1st Battalions of the 5th Line, Lot, République and Rhône et Loire, 2nd Battalion of the 17th Line, 4th Battalion of the Moselle, a half company of sappers and eight guns in one foot artillery battery. Vincent's advance guard included one battalion of the Chasseurs de Reims, five squadrons each of the 1st Chasseurs de Cheval and Gendarmerie regiments and six guns in one horse artillery battery. First day Brunswick's army was deployed with its right flank resting on the city of Kaiserslautern and its flank covered by the marshy banks of the Lauter River. Just to the north, a regiment was stationed on the Castle Hill at Otterberg in order to maintain a link with Ernst Christian von Kospath's division at Lauterkenwell. To the north, another division was posted at Tripstadt to the south. The Tripstadt force maintained communications with Frederick Lewis, Prince of Hohenlohe Ingelfingen's corps near Piemsens. Hohenlohe blocked the eastward routes to Landau via Neustadt and der Weinstrasse and Anweiler am Trifels. Another Prussian corps under Wilhelm René de Lum de Kulbira operated in the Rhine Valley, supporting Worms' army and covering the passes in the Vosges. Finally, a brigade under Leopold Heinrich von der Goltz guarded the pigeon near height west of Wissenberg. Military theorist Antoine Henry Jomini commented that Brunswick ought to have massed all these forces against Hoche. He also faulted Hoche for attacking in three separated columns. On 28 November the French army advanced in three columns against the Prussian position, with Tarponia leading the right, Hoche the centre and Umbit the left. Tarponia moved against the village of Ogilway while Umbit aimed to cross the Lauter at Hirschhorn. Tarponia's column was the first to encounter the Prussians and to open the battle, meeting moderate success. The initial attack carried his troops onto the outer ridge of the Hoheneck Heights. Tarponia also came up against the Galgenberg which was defended by a Prussian redoubt. Alarmed at the march of Ambert's column, Brunswick reacted by sending Kalkreuth north to block it. Kalkreuth's force took a new position with his left flank on the Lauter, his centre at Morlautin and his right near Erlenbach. Another division was placed on the Kaiserberg, while Duke Karl August of Saxe Weimar was left to defend the western approaches to Kaiserslautern. After leaving Rode and back, Hoche's column encountered impassable roads in the Vug forest and had to detour around the obstacle. His troops stayed on the west bank of the Lauter and never got into action on the 28th. By strenuous efforts, Ambit crossed the Lauter and moved south through Katzfeiler and Sambach. He gamely attacked across the Otterbach stream several times but his 6,000 men were outnumbered by Kalkreut. Menaced with encirclement, Ambit retreated and came in close proximity to Hoche's center column near Sambach. Despite the lack of success, Hoche determined to deliver the main attack from his left wing the next day. Accordingly, he made preparations to cross the Sambach Bridge to join Ambert. Second day the next day the French army crossed the river in force. On the 29th, Dubois advance guard crossed first and joined the brigade under Olivier in a costly attack on the Prussian entrenchments. Meanwhile, Hoche established a 16-gun battery near Sambach and a second battery near Erfenbach on the west bank. Ambert led the brigades of Simon and Paillard far to the left to turn the Prussian position at Otterberg. Ue moved against the enemy position with Morlot's brigade. Under the crossfire of the Sambach and Erfenbach batteries, the Prussians fell back and the French crossed the Otterberg. Hoche set up a 29-gun battery on the Osterberg height, starting a mutual bombardment that went on for a few hours. The French general then hurled a column of 10,000 troops at the Prussian left flank. This part of Kalkreuth's position between the Lauter and Morlautin was separated from the rest of his line by a ravine. Two regiments of Saxon cavalry charged Hue's division in the left flank. Hoche's chief of staff Gabriel Marie-Joseph, 
Comte d'Aduville brought up some French cavalry squadrons from the Osterberg and hit the Saxons in their right flank. More horsemen from both sides joined the melee and ultimately the Saxons prevailed. Shaken by the cavalry charge, the French infantry withdrew to the Otterbach Valley. The French attacks on Erlenbach also failed and by 6 p.m. the fusillade died down. On the left flank, Simon's brigade got lost and was unable to join Paylard's brigade at the old Otterberg glassworks until that evening. By then it was too late to mount an attack, so the 29th was Ambit's day to miss the action. Ambit had to march all night to rejoin the French main force. Unknown to the French, Kospith's division marched south from Lauterkin to Shallowden back, from which the Prussian could attack Ambit in the rear. So it was lucky that the French left wing shifted position. On the right flank Tarponia assaulted the Galgenberg but was unable to make any headway. The Prussian left wing was supported by artillery fire from the Kaiserberg. Brunswick directed Wartens Leben at Tripstadt to march to Kaiserslautern with three battalions and ten squadrons. During the day, Wartens Leben's troops reinforced the Duke of Saxe Weimar's position on the Galgenberg and helped drive Tarponia's men back into the woods. Third day, Hoche persisted in his attacks on 30 November. At dawn, he directed his artillery to open a new barrage on the Prussian positions. On the left flank, leading four battalions against the Buckberg near Erlenbach, Gabriel Jean Joseph Molitor failed to capture the position and was repulsed after a sanguinary fight with the Saxons. The appearance of Kaspith's troops near Otterberg and his rear compelled Molitor to make a rapid retreat. The French assaulted the Gallup Felberg height, but this effort was also defeated. This feature is located north of the Kaiserberg. While holding the woods in the center, the division of Vue had difficulty maintaining its position, suffering under a storm of grape shot. The cavalry of both armies was very active. The fighting took the former charges and counter charges of the French and Saxo Prussian cavalry. On the French right, Tarponia made two more assaults on the Galgenberg, but Sax Weimar drove them off. After having secured his flanks, the Duke of Brunswick launched a counter-attack against the Osterberg. Seeing his left wing outflanked by the Saxons near Erlenbach, Hoche ordered a retreat. He detailed Ambert and five battalions to cover the withdrawal from the Mayberg height while the army filed to the west bank across the Sambach. Bridge and another span built near the Lampitz Mill. Hoche's exhausted troops retreated to Zweibruck and Hornbach in Piemsons. Following the passive strategy of his sovereign, King Frederick William II, Brunswick did not launch a pursuit. 